So if you're a front-end developer and you're building apps that are form heavy or just have a form here and there, even just a login screen, right? Like if you're building that yourself, you should really be using form validation. And there's two libraries that I really like for that. One is called React Hook Form and the other one is called Yup. So React Hook Form does like a lot of your state management for the form, but so much more than that. And I'll show you some examples. And then Yup is for schema validation, right? You can like declare your schema and you can enforce what types you want your schema to be in. And they're just a match made in heaven so much that there is a library dedicated to integrating both of them, right? So we're going to like dive right in here and I'm going to first start with Yup. We're going to go from the top to the bottom, right? So with Yup, we're going to first declare our schema. What do we do for declaring our schema? So we're going to use this form that I have right here as an example. And this form, as you can see, has an email, a first name, and a last name. So what we're going to do is we're going to declare an object. So yup, that object. And then we're going to declare all our properties. So we have email, first name, last name. Then we can declare what each type is, right? And some of them have really cool functions like dot email, which brings out of the box validation. So for example, email is going to be type string and then string is going to say we're going to use the out of the box validation to say, OK, this should be a valid email, right? Like have an at sign, have a dot com, things like that. And then we're going to say if it's required or not required. So for example, here we could say last name is not required or is nullable, for example. Um, but in this case, we're going to keep that as, as required. Second, we can, when it's required, we can also pass a message. So I'm going to have this little message object up here. So missing field, this field is required, only letters, no numbers allowed, right? So first, uh, first name, we have yup.string. We could also do cool things here. So for example, we could say like this string should match this regex, right? Or this specific validation, which, which, which we have up here, which is very simple. Just let's not allow any numbers. And then we can have a specific message in case those numbers, you know, it has numbers or things like that. And we could also do way more things, right? We can do conditional relations, right? So for example, we could say, we could have something like username and say, okay, if email is not, is no, we could have username be required, things like that, which is really cool. But I'll probably do, could do another video just for that. Another cool thing is that we can have this thing called inferred type, which will basically create a type for us, uh, which we can use in multiple places, just such as down right here. And we just don't, it, it's cool because you don't have to like recreate your types, right? Like you can have your schema from your schema, also declare your types and interfaces. So scrolling down now, we're going to have this thing called form methods, which we can get from the use form hook, which is provided by react hook form library. Then this library right here, this function is called the up resolver, which is another package that we installed ca called hook form resolvers yup, which allows us to integrate yup with uh, react hook form. Just disclaimer, you could also be using Zod and there's a Zod resolver, um, which Zod is another validation library. I just been using Yup for like the past three years. So I'm like really used to it at this point. So moving down from form methods, right? We can get a few things from here, right? So again, I mentioned that it helps you manage the state for your library. So the first thing is, for example, if we call handle submit, which we'll use down below, we can basically wrap our form and every time that the unsubmit is called we inject all the values that have been managed by react hook form directly or have access to it right it injects it because we have access to it and then we can use those values in our unsubmit then we're in this case we're going to use register so what register does is pretty self-explanatory it'll grab like let's say if we have an input or a drop down right and we want to register that component under React Hook form. So we'll say, for example, down here, we'll have input and we're going to say, okay, we want to register this input to be first name, which is going to match our schema, which then is used in our use form hook. And basically everything within this form that is named first name will be managed automatically by React Hook form because we're registering the component, right? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Then we move down into our actual form. And one thing you'll see here is that I've imported this thing called form provider. 
I've done this to show you another cool way, which we could basically have nested components that have access to our hook form. And we can share all the logic that we've built in, in the parent form in like child uh, components. So, and I've built this email input just to illustrate that really quickly. But before I dive into that, let's just keep going down the line. So we have, like I said, right, we'll have like our label that's not reactive form. But if you recall up here, we I've also um, destructured form state. Form state has is basically self-explanatory as well. We can get so many values like it's dirty, it's loading, it's submitted, right? Like touch fields, default values. In this case, I've mostly used the errors and like this is a very good use case to take errors out. So basically what we're saying, if there are errors dot first name, we're going to show this very little message. And this message is going to correspond to what we have up here, which is super cool. Similarly for last name, right? So very quickly, before I show you a little demo here, we're going to go into like email input. And what you'll see here is uh, I've called another hook called use form context, and it's going to have all the same values and like objects and functions that we had in use form. However, use form context will only work when there is a parent container that has form provider, which is super awesome, which means that because we can build custom components that we might not want to have in our form directly. And we have them in, let's say, another file. But because they're under form provider or this component is under form provider, it's going to get all the properties from the parent. Right. So in this case, we're going to we're you know, I just added this form values, but I've basically imported this from the what I inferred in the parent component. But very similarly, right, we have register, we register this under email, and then we're going to have also access to the errors. We're going to have access to everything, which is pretty dope. So I'm going to save this really quickly, and I'm going to show you what happens if we try to submit this form empty. Boom, this field is required, this field is required. So if we recall up here, we have basically that's like the first kind of validation. Let's say I'm going to, in the email field, I'm just going to type AAA. Now it says email must be a valid email. If I hit submit, we're also going to get this out of the box saying, please include an at. And this validation we have here comes straight out of the box from like this email function from Yup, right? There's again, also many other types of things. So now let's say we are going to do at gmail.com. Great. Now it's going to say this field is required. So let's say I just type 222. Oh, no numbers allowed, right? And the reason we have no numbers allowed is because we said, okay, this specific property, first name, has to match this regular ex expression. And this regular expression allows no numbers. So meaning if you violate that regular expression, we're basically going to get this error message. So now if I type Alejandro, it's gone. But we still have this one right here, right? So I can now say Roman. So let me get rid of this error message right here. Let me move my little face, my beautiful face from there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. So unsubmit here, we had this unsubmit, which is handle submit again, handle submit. We got from form methods and this is basically taking unsubmit and it's going to inject basically all the form values that we've created into our own submit. So it's going to allow us to have access. So if I press submit here, boom, our entire object is there. This is pretty, pretty freaking sick in my opinion, right? So let me show you a couple more things which I, which I think are awesome. So for example, let's say we have another thing called watch. And what watch is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to track a specific values, right? So for example, we can say const first name, last name equals watch. And there's like a lot of things. Maybe you want to track this to display a specific message. So for example, if I say console.log first name, and now uh, I start tracking here a, oops, here we go, a, le, and ro. So basically it's gonna work like you state, right? So there's so, so many things you could do with this, like sky's the limit. And once you really start understanding React Hook form, you basically won't need to use you state. You can manage everything here and you can like declare so many things in your schema. You can use arrays, you can have files, you can have whatever you want, right? So I'd suggest you give it a try. It's gonna definitely help you and elevate your forms and take them to the next level.
If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Thank you for watching, y'all.